In today's Final Touch, auctioneers and truffle hunters are celebrating the sale of the biggest white truffle found this year. It was found in northern Italy's Piedmont region near Alba, the white truffle capital of the world. The prize white truffle weighs a whopping 1,005 grams or 2.2 pounds and it's worth a small fortune. This giant was sold via live auction with bidders from all over the world. The winning sliced on top of dishes. If it were cooked, it loses its flavor. The town of Alba celebrates its fungus each November in all of its glory. That's a lot of money, $132,000. That's, that's a lot of money for, for fungus. And you gotta eat it, right? I've never tried a truffle, have you? I haven't either, not at that price. <laughs> that's our time for now. News 3 Now at 5 starts right now. Right now at 5 after a snowy and nasty morning commute, what the city of Madison is doing about the roads right now. A ceremony at the state capitol honors Wisconsin veterans. We'll introduce you to one local hero. Plus, a new housing unit has been created for incarcerated veterans at the Dane County Jail. We'll tell you how it works. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 5. And thanks for staying with us. We saw snow overnight into the morning, and that covered our roads. And now we're preparing for even colder temperatures across southern Wisconsin. We have team coverage of the road conditions and the upcoming alert days. Let's get a look at your first alert forecast. Gary Canalti is on the weather patio. Gary? Well, we got a general of uh, two to four inches of snow with some localized five inch amounts down toward the Illinois state line and that fresh snow cover is allowing temperatures to drop. Now there could still be a couple of flurries this evening. It looks like a couple are just to the east of La Crosse that'll work their way across southern Wisconsin, but then skies will clear out and you can see the snow cover is pretty widespread over southern Wisconsin with the heaviest snow cover from Madison southward. Temperatures right now are in the teens away from Lake Michigan. We've dropped to 18 in Madison, but you factor in the winds right now, it feels like it's five degrees here in Madison. Just uh, across the Mississippi River, wind chills are already at or below zero, and those will continue to drop. In fact, temperatures over the next 12 hours will be down into the middle single digits by tomorrow morning, and that'll be close to, or actually should break the record low of seven, set back in 1986. Look for another very cold day tomorrow with a high of 18. At least it won't be snowing, but some light snows in the forecast for Wednesday. I'll have more details later on in weather. All right, Gary, thank you. And after dozens of crashes in our area this morning, the Madison Streets Division says the cold is to blame for keeping those roads slippery during your commute. With the cold, they can't pre-treat roads to prepare for the snow, which is something they normally do much later in the season. Our Amanda Quintana is out on the west side with how they're treating the roads now. Amanda? Yes, well, those city plows were sent out at about 2 this morning, and they have been treating the roads with salt since then until 3 o'clock today when they switched from salt to sand. And they're hoping that that gives drivers on their evening commute a little traction in what they are calling an early headache winter storm. I've lived in Wisconsin my whole life. I've never liked winter. After a messy morning commute by this afternoon, they plowed and salted and everything's done, so roads were fine. Madison Streets Division says after below freezing temperatures to start the day, it took a while for the roads to warm up and the salt to work, especially since that salt was being covered by snow all morning. What made this storm a little trickier for us is that it was so cold this morning. When it gets right around 20 degrees, salt doesn't work as well. Brian Johnson says that cold also prevented the trucks from pre-treating the roads with brine ahead of the snow. By well, the time we saw what was going to happen, we didn't have the staff or time to to be able to get out there to apply the brine to those streets, assuming that it would have even done anything because the temperatures were so cold. This snow paired with cold, it's something the streets division isn't used to seeing until December or January. Right now, they're dealing with two seasons at once. Yeah, we've had something like 15 inches of snow in the past two weeks in at the height of leaf season, and it's tricky to juggle all that because the same people that are in the plow trucks are the same ones out there collecting leaves. The slippery, slick roads are something many of us just aren't ready for yet, even those who grew up driving in the snow. I've been raised in Wisconsin, so I'm used to it. Um, but definitely being a little precautious. Just wish it would wait until winter. And I'm moving away from the snow soon, so that's good. <laughs> Those plows that are out now laying out the sand, they will be out until midnight tonight. They're working on those main thoroughfares right now, and then they will switch to those neighborhood streets. Amanda Quintana, live on the west side. Thanks, Amanda.
The three northbound lanes are now open on Verona Road after all that major construction that went on there. Work on the entire project started way back in 2013. And today, three northbound and southbound lanes are open to traffic. If you were open over the weekend, it is the most lanes that we've seen open on Verona Road now in two years. Much more efficient uh, and a safer area and a corridor for all, or all the travelers. And certainly we want to make sure that people are paying attention for any new traffic patterns and lane shifts. A number of sidewalks and overpasses were added to improve the Verona Road area for pedestrians and bicyclists as well. In the last six years, the DOT has worked on parts of the Beltline, Raymond Road, and Highway PD as well. Now, construction will continue along other stretches in that area, so look out for workers. The official end date of all that work is next year. Today was a big day to celebrate our nation's heroes. A ceremony at the state capitol was held this morning where Governor Tony Evers said it is our mission to ensure that our veterans are always taken care of. And a Wisconsin veteran was honored at that ceremony as someone the governor said was an obvious hero. Jamie Perez joins us now with his story. Jamie? Yeah, well, he was a former UW student and a student athlete. Thomas J. Lucas Jr. dedicated his life to something bigger than all of us. His world changed forever when as he was studying for an exam on campus. It was when he heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor over the radio. Lucas was drafted into the military. He left behind life here in Wisconsin and his family as he prepared for war. He volunteered to become a paratrooper and he's been around the world fighting for our country. Today he was recognized for his noble years of service. FC Tom was wounded three times in 21 days. There was no way to evacuate when you're surrounded by Germans intent on killing you. He was patched up, sent back time and again into the fight for survival. Lucas did not speak at today's ceremony, but Governor Tony Evers gave him a certificate this afternoon thanking him for all of his service then and now. Lucas has received four Purple Hearts as well for his service, and he also came back to finish school. He finally got his master's degree in social work, so while he was certainly someone honorable to be highlighted at this ceremony today, we obviously thank all of those who have served. Yeah, so such a special day for that recognition. Jamie Perez reporting. Jamie. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. The Dodgeville School District is honoring local veterans through a special tribute wall. It features the names and some photos of alumni who have served. According to a Facebook post by the district, the wall is up at the district's high school. Bill Wassley and Laura Nyberg spearheaded this project. And the Dane County Jail is introducing a veterans only unit to Wisconsin. Barracks Behind Bars is a new unit working closely with the VA to provide veterans with the services they need. Our Gabriella Becerra visited the barracks and shares how it differs from other units. Gabby? The unit is called Barracks Behind Bars because it runs pretty much just like a military military barrack. All armed forces are present and the deputies and sergeant that oversee the unit are veterans as well. Dane County Sheriff Dave Mahoney has been working with the National Institute of Corrections to bring this concept to Wisconsin. The goal is to provide the veterans with support and benefits that it can help them back into society. Treat these individuals with the respect and dignity that they deserve in hopes that through the programming we reduce the recidivism and get them back on on track to, uh, to be productive citizens. Mahoney says since the unit was initiated less than a year ago, there have been a decrease in incidents. One veteran in the unit says he sees more maturity from the others in the barracks compared to other units. I will have more about what the sheriff's plans are for the unit on News 3 Now at 6. We will see you then. Thanks a lot, Gabrielle. And to thank the more than 20 million veterans in the United States who have served, many restaurants and businesses are offering freebies and deals to those who have served. Hopcat, Olive Garden, and Chili's, just a few of the restaurants that are giving free meals to veterans. Target, Great Clips, and Amazon are among those giving discounts for a list of some of those deals. You can head to our website, channel3000.com. Meanwhile, in New York, President Trump and the First Lady paid tribute to veterans who have served in the nation's armed forces at a soldier's memorial in New York's Madison Square Park. The president addressed the crowd gathered for the city's 100th Veterans Day parade. He is the first commander in chief to kick off the annual event. The men and women who have donned our nation's uniforms are the bravest, toughest, strongest, and most virtuous warriors ever to walk on earth. 
More than 25,000 people, including veterans and active duty military personnel, marched along Fifth Avenue today. Several 2020 presidential hopefuls spent Veterans Day unveiling proposals to serve America's 20 million veterans. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders has called for substantially expanding access to VA mental health care. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren says she wants to cut the suicide rate for veterans in half in four years and provide annual mental health checks for service members. And Mayor Pete Buttigieg, himself a veteran, says he'd like to name the first woman to head the Department of Veterans Affairs. Every veteran who serves in whatever capacity and with whatever experience they had should be able to expect a level of support in exchange for what they offered this country. It is a reminder how much we owe our veterans, uh, how they are part of our families, our friends, our communities. Recent polls show a tight four-way race in Iowa between Sanders, Warren Buttigieg, and former Vice President Joe Biden. The state's caucuses are less than three months away. The Columbia Correctional Institution in Portage is entering its fourth day on lockdown. The Department of Corrections says a staff member was assaulted on Friday, prompting the lockdown out of concern for the safety and security of the staff. The DOC says the lockdown will continue until it feels it's safe to lift the restrictions. A spokesperson tells us there have been two additional staff assaults in the past week, but they are unrelated to Friday's assault. The Madison Fire Department is using a pair of chimney fires to remind people to have their chimneys serviced as colder weather moves in. Firefighters were called to Harding Street Sunday afternoon. Residents reported seeing flames coming from their chimney. The residents were advised not to use the fireplace again until the property owner has it checked out. Sunday evening, firefighters were called to a home on Kendall Avenue for another chimney fire. Firefighters arrived to find embers glowing from the chimney cap. The firefighters determined that a bird or a squirrel nest had caught on fire. Across the state, authorities suspect animal welfare activists are behind the vandalism of several deer stands in western Wisconsin. Those stands have been seen in Dunn, Barron, and St. Croix counties. The stilts of one stand were cut in half, and the words, the hunters will be hunted, were painted on it. Deputies say there may be a possible connection to the Animal Liberation Front. The damage includes the spray-painted letters ALF. The group says on its website that it destroyed 10 stands. Wisconsin's Nate Reavers is the Big Ten Player of the Week. He was a block away from a triple-double in last week's win over Eastern Illinois. He had 14 points, 14 boards, 9 blocks in that game, 22 points in the earlier loss to St. Mary's. Wisconsin will take on McNeese State at the Kohl Center on Wednesday, tip time 6 p.m. More to come on News 3 Now at 5. Public hearings kick off this week in the impeachment inquiry. We'll tell you what to expect. And then coming up tonight at 6, car thefts are still happening all around the area. We'll share the latest numbers that might have, have you double checking your locks tonight. And mixed numbers to start the week on Wall Street. The Dow adds 10, but red numbers for the Nasdaq down 11 and the S&P, which lost uh, half dozen. We'll be right back.
The country is about to get a first-hand look at the House impeachment inquiry with public hearings set to begin later this week. Ahead of those hearings, President Trump unleashed a series of tweets pushing back on the impeachment inquiry. In one, the president accused Congressman Adam Schiff of releasing doctored witness transcripts and said Republicans should put out their own transcripts. Republicans have submitted a list of witnesses that they want to testify at the hearings. It includes the anonymous whistleblower whose complaint triggered the impeachment inquiry. I'm curious to know how someone who doesn't have any experience in Ukraine or nor experience in a natural gas company becomes on the board of a natural gas company in Ukraine. What information Mr. Biden, Hunter Biden, a private citizen who has broke no laws by serving on a board of directors would have about the president's withholding of military aid to Ukraine? House Judiciary Chairman Adam Schiff said they would evaluate the list but would not allow the hearings to become, quote, a sham investigation into the Biden's or debunked conspiracy theories. Anti-government protests continue in Hong Kong, and we do want to warn you, some of the images here are graphic. An anti-government protester was shot at point-blank range by a police officer. Another man was set on fire. Protesters brought the workday to a halt, smashing Chinese-owned banks and businesses throughout the Central Business District. Police responded by using tear gas and water cannons to subdue the protesters, while office workers fled violence that has become all but routine. Violence is not going to give us any solution to the problems that Hong Kong is facing. Our joint priority now as a city is to end the violence and to return Hong Kong to normal as soon as possible. The man shot and the man set on fire remain in critical condition. A scary morning for some travelers at Chicago's O'Hare Airport when their plane slid off the runway. It was an American Airlines plane headed to Chicago from North Carolina. The Federal Aviation Administration says some of the plane's landing gear collapsed. Luckily, no one was hurt, but the FAA is investigating. More than 500 flights have been canceled today at O'Hare and Midway. So on that note, we turn to our first alert forecast, which is again flirting with record lows. Here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? I think we're well on our way to setting a record low temperature by tomorrow morning. With all this fresh snow cover on the ground and skies that will be clearing later on tonight, those temperatures will drop pretty rapidly. They've already been falling over the last few hours. As we take a look at some of the snow reports, and officially these are through noon, we're starting to get some uh, final updates as the snow comes to an end. But about 5 inches in Broadhead, 4 inches in Cassville and Grant County, 3.3 inches here at the station, about 3 inches in Sun Prairie. But notice the farther north and west you go, the lower the totals. Uh, just shy of two inches in Beaver Dam and Gotham in uh, Richland County, uh, less than an inch there. And as far as the uh, major reporting stations, so far Milwaukee and Madison have set records for the day for the uh, heaviest amount of snow for November 11th. Uh, Madison, 2.5 inches. Again, that's as of noon. We'll get the official reports as of uh, 6 o'clock, so hopefully we'll have them in time for the uh, 6 p.m. newscast. But you can see Dubuque, Iowa, about almost 4.5 inches. Rockford, Illinois, Chicago, they're about three and a half inches, and it was still snowing there at the at, at noon. But notice La Crosse, only a trace of snow. The farther north and west you go, the less the snow that, that came down. On Doppler track right now, things are pretty quiet. There are a couple of flurries that are showing up, and it's not out of the question that we could still see a flurry tonight. It's not going to add to the snow totals. The heavier snow that we saw this morning has now shifted to the east into Michigan, and you can see the lake effect snows starting to kick in in southwestern Michigan and parts of northwestern Indiana where winter storm warnings are in effect. Over the next 12 hours, think of where our temperatures go. We're down to about the middle single digits above zero by early tomorrow morning, but more importantly, the wind chills will be down to about 15 below zero. The record low temperature for tomorrow is seven, set back in 1986. I think we have a good chance of breaking that. So an alert day in the forecast for the record cold for tonight. Also near record cold for tomorrow for a record cold high temperature. The high forecast high of 18 will be very close to the record low high temperature of 16, set back in 1940. Wednesday will still be very cold. We'll actually start to see our temperatures rise later on tomorrow night, and that could lead to some light snow on Wednesday with an inch or two possible. Not a heavy amount, but again, depending on timing, that could lead to some slippery road surfaces. So three things you really need to know in the forecast. That record low temperature, the unseasonably cold weather continuing through Tuesday, and then on Wednesday, the light snow in the forecast. But the good news is, as we go on through the rest of the week, temperatures will moderate by a couple of degrees each day. Live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison. Pretty quiet out there now, but it's been a cold day. The high of 26 is early this morning. The low temperature 
was at 18. In fact, that's where we are right now. So that's our low temperature for the day. The wind chill is at five thanks to a north northwesterly wind at 12 miles per hour. Forecast for tonight. Just a chance for a flurry this evening and skies will clear out overnight and it'll turn record cold. That low of four should break the record low of seven, as I mentioned earlier. And then tomorrow, a partly sunny but unseasonably cold day. High temperature at 18. We should be about uh, a good uh, 25 degrees uh, warmer than that. Future track, quiet conditions overnight. A slight chance of a flurry this evening. Temperatures dropping into the single digits by tomorrow morning. High temperatures tomorrow only in the upper teens through all of southern Wisconsin. Tomorrow night as the clouds come in, notice those temperatures start to rise as we head toward early on Wednesday morning. So we'll be about as warm Wednesday morning as we were during the afternoon tomorrow. And then the light snow follows and that'll bring temperatures into the mid-20s. And again, we're probably looking for maybe an inch or two of accumulation. After that, look for those temperatures to go up by a couple of degrees each day. That brings us up close to 40 by the uh, end of the weekend, the early part of next week, and maybe a couple of 40s in there. After that, look for some light snow as we turn colder on Thursday of next week. As we take a look at first alert traffic, it is a holiday, so the traffic is actually Actually pretty light. There's the belt line at Park Street, and of course, we had the story earlier how the roads have improved now. The snow has stopped. Still seeing some slowdowns on the eastbound belt line from about Monona Drive to Park Street. Westbound, just a slight delay between Fish Hatchery Road and Park Street. Right now, a 21 minute commute on the eastbound belt line from University Avenue to the interstate, only 17 minutes going back in the westbound direction. But it's the 35 minute trip down to Janesville on I 3990 from the belt line, seeing heavier traffic there. And of course, the roads were uh, a little more snow covered down toward Rock. County, 17 minutes out to Sauk City on US 12 and 21 minutes to Sun Prairie on East Washington Avenue, US 151. That's your News 3 Now, First Alert Traffic. Thank you, Gary. Ahead at five more veterans are taking their lives than are dying in the line of duty. How a new program is helping to change that.
According to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, nearly 17 former active duty members of the military take their own lives every day. But a new program is helping them find reasons to live. Deborah L. Farone explains. Life is good. Yes. This song keeps Army veteran Titus Battle of Brooklyn, New York alive. For most of his life, he was singing a very different tune rooted in years of abuse, homelessness, and an attempted suicide. So I just simply took the gun, pointed it to my heart, and pulled the trigger at point blank range. It ricocheted all around my body and just, just destroyed my internal organs. It took a six hour surgery to uh, save my life. Experts say Titus was suffering from something called moral injury. Dr. Rita Brock is one of the leading experts on the subject. PTSD is usually regarded as something based in fear. And moral injury is your conscience. You start to doubt yourself, doubt your values, doubt your society. Dr. Brock created a program through Volunteers of America called Resilient Strength Training, designed specifically for veterans. Battle was part of the first group, and now he helps lead it. In war, there is the main issue of having to take a life. That's just devastating. I lost a lot of friends. The five-day intensive program encourages veterans to share their traumatic experiences with other veterans through storytelling, writing, and art. Titus and his first group told his own suicide attempt story. He said, I'm making a pledge today not to die by my own hand, and I'm inviting anybody who wants to join me to raise their hand, and all five of them raise their hands. There are weeks of follow-up after. So far, 95 veterans have participated. No one has taken their life. No one has returned to drugs or alcoholism or anything of a self-destructive nature, not even I. That's why today. And so he sings to build resilience and to help other vets build theirs. Today is a wonderful day. Deborah Alfarone, CBS News, Alexandria, Virginia. Let's stay with us. We'll have another check of your forecast in just a moment.
Tonight on the CBS Evening News, over 200 million Americans are bracing for freezing temperatures. We'll tell you where and when the Arctic invasion is expected to hit hardest. Big changes to your Instagram feed. Public likes are going away. Why the move is getting a lot of dislikes. And we begin our week-long series, Profiles in Service, with the story of a veteran who tells us how perspiration has given him purpose. We've got those stories and more tonight on the CBS Evening News, wishing all of our veterans a happy Veterans Day. Four degrees tonight, four degrees. We're already on our way down there. Uh, wow. We've got uh, just a couple of flurries out there up toward the lacrosse area that might affect us at some point this evening. But the temperatures are already in the upper teens away from Lake Michigan. And look at the wind chills. It feels like it's five degrees out there. It feels like it's one below zero at the Pierre Dells Airport. And we have alert days for tomorrow and Wednesday for the cold and snow, uh, about one to two inches of snow on Wednesday. But look at that warm up, Ooh. about a degree or two each day. How about that? We'll have more updates in 30 minutes.